Today I'm going to show you how to use a circular saw. Not just how to use it, we're going to go over everything. We're going to go over blade changing, blade selection, all the parts of the saw, the functionality of the saw, and most of all how to use this saw safely. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deerdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. I've had this saw for about 10 years and out of all the saws that I've had, this has become my favorite. It has really good power and it runs really quiet. I could not be happier with the performance of this saw. I couldn't even begin to guess how much wood this saw has cut since I've owned it. It's still going strong and I'm going to regret the day that it goes. I'm sure that day's coming because it's cut a lot of wood. I've put a link down in the description for this saw and some other things that I'm going to be using today. And just remember, if you use that link to get this saw, it doesn't cost you any extra. However, I do get a small percentage. Let's start right here with the bottom of the saw. This is the sole plate. It's referred to as a base, a shoe, multiple other names from different saw companies. I don't know how all that came about. But for this video, we are going to refer to this as the sole plate. The sole plate serves many purposes. And its most important purpose is for stabilization of the saw while you're cutting the wood. They've provided you with this nice wide surface on this side of the sole plate. And this is the surface that you would use for the piece of wood that you're keeping. Your cutoff would be on this side. If you were to try and use the saw with this side on your cutoff, it wouldn't be very stable and you would produce an off 90 degree cut that wouldn't be very acceptable. So you always remember to keep your piece of wood you're keeping on this wider side of the sole plate. The sole plate also has these notches in it right here. Let's take a closer look. These are your cut guide notches. And this notch is for your zero cut or your blade straight up 90 degrees or zero. And this notch over here is for your 45 degree cut. Anything between 0 and a 45 is going to fall in between here. And you really don't know where that's at. Some saws are laid out a little differently than this with multiple little notches that you can kind of learn what goes where when you're cutting it, where your line should be when you're cutting it. Most of the time, if you're not cutting a 0 cut or a 90 degree cut, you would be using some type of a sled or some type of a piece of wood to keep to run this side of the saw along to keep a nice straight line if you're cutting a bevel you would want to do that anyway so that you don't get your bevel off 90 degrees if you get your bevel off 90 degrees then it's not going to line up well and your board's going to be crooked and we'll talk about that shortly so just to kind of show you so this is the side of the wood that we're keeping so you can see where the straight edge comes up to that notch right there. And it's just right smack in the middle of that little notch is where you want to keep your line. If we look at this side of the saw, we can see a zero and a line stamped in the plate right here. And that line indicates where your markings on your board should be running through the saw. The sole plate also allows you to set your depth of cut. We have a little lever here that we can loosen it and we can adjust our depth of cut with the sole plate. There are some markings inside of here with dimensions. Mine goes from two and a half down to basically nothing. So we've got a little notch right here that we line up with the notches here. So this is a half inch and this would be three quarter. That's what we're getting ready to cut. So we're just going to lock it down right there. The reason it's important that you use this and not just say like, well, I'm cutting a piece of three quarter wood so I know the blade's deep enough if the sole plate's all the way up. The problem with that is you're exposing so much blade to the wood that the potential for binding the blade in the wood, if you try to correct or get back on the line, the blade could bind more easily than if you just have this little bit exposed. And when the blade binds, that's when the saw will balk. It will try to kick back at you a little bit and can do weird things. Those are the unexpected things and the part of safe operation. Safe operation is only allowing enough blade to stick past this sole plate 
to cut through the material that you're cutting through. The next function of the saw plate is for the bevel cut. We have a little lever right here that we can loosen and then the entire saw plate will twist down all the way to a 45 and anything between 0 and 45. When you're in between 45 and 0, like I say, this becomes kind of skewed. It won't give you the best reading. So if we take the straight edge and we come up underneath the blade here at a 45, you can see that it is at the very outside edge of this notch right here in the sole plate. And that would be your line guide. However, I wouldn't rely on that. It's very hard to cut a bevel cut with a circular saw and keep it straight enough to be of any use to you. And I'll show you how we're going to set it up to get a nice straight 90 degree bevel cut. The next thing I want to talk about is the blade guard. Being a carpenter and having been on many job sites, some of the guys will remove these blade guards. And the reason they remove them is because when you're doing an angle cut on a piece of wood, especially if it's a steep angle, the blade guard will not push back like it is intended to. In fact, it just kind of hits and it won't move. So a lot of times on the job site, you're operating the saw one-handed and you're holding the wood in your other hand and you really have no way to hold this blade guard up. And they're in a rush, so they're not going to take the time to clamp the material down where they can free up a hand. So some guys take this off. I have never made that a practice of mine. I do not like to use a saw that the blade guard has been removed from. I have. I've picked a saw or two up on the job site and I've heard come from the background it has no blade guard. So I have used those saws. I just don't like the idea of it. You have to wait for the blade to completely stop turning before you can set the saw down because typically it is set down like that and the blade would dig into whatever. If it was another piece of wood, the saw would just take off for a minute. So it's really a bad idea to take this blade guard off, especially knowing that the only time you'll ever have a problem with it not wanting to operate the way it's supposed to is when you do a steep angle cut. And I'll also demonstrate that here shortly and we'll talk about that a little bit further. Now let's talk about the blade. This is a Diablo framing blade. And it's important that you select the right blade for the right job. The more teeth that a blade has, the finer it's going to cut. If you're cutting some three quarter inch material for something that you're building, a little woodworking project that you're doing or something like that, you may want a finer blade. I'm going to show you here in a minute the quality of cut that this framing blade will do on a piece of three quarter inch material. And mind you, this blade has been on my saw for a long time. I really like the performance of these blades. They stay sharp for a long time, even cutting pine. I very seldom clean this blade and it still performs so very nicely. I've probably went through five of these blades in the last two years. And to me, I think that's phenomenal. I also want to point out that some blades are designed for corded saws and some blades are designed for cordless saws. So when you're purchasing the blade for your corded circular saw, you want to make sure that it is marked for a corded circular saw. And you can see right here, the little plug, it's still a little bit of it there and it says four corded saws. So you want to make sure that you get a blade for a corded saw if you have a corded saw or a blade for a cordless saw if you have a cordless saw. And the reason there's a difference is because of the battery life on the cordless saws. Those blades are not as aggressive as a corded blade may be. Therefore, they're not taking as big a bite. It'll make that saw operate more smoothly. and It'll make that battery life last a little bit longer. Let's take this blade off and we'll talk about that real quick. Right here on my saw is where my tool is stored to change the blade. I also want to point out that we have the trigger here. I also want to note that the handle on this saw is adjustable. And we can do that by unlocking this feature right here. We pull this lever back and that allows this one to release. 
and that will allow us to move the handle in some different locations they have a neutral setting basically right here that's where I like to use the saw I don't think that I've ever used it outside of this setting to be honest with you I like it right here to remove the blade we need to lock the motor and we're going to use this button right here to do that it just pushes in so we're going to exert a little bit of force on that button and as we do we rotate the blade to where it locks so there the blade is locked now we'll get our tool in here and take our bolt loose Once the bolt's loose, you can let go of the button. Then we're going to have this washer right here. It may or may not be stubborn. There it is. And basically, this washer is concaved. And what that does is it allows the bolt to put, to exert a little more force on this blade. And then the blade comes off. Now, I also want to note that your teeth should all be pointing forward so when this saw is cutting the blade is rotating this way and through its cutting action it is trying to pull the saw tighter to the wood and the only reason that the saw gets bucky if you have too much blade exposed in the depth of the wood that you're cutting is because of the back of the blade because the back of the blade will bind and it will try to lift the saw up so the, it, it can literally, it'll push the saw up kind of like that if it binds on you, unless it slips the blade. Sometimes they will slip the blade. The blade will just basically stop turning. And you'll know then, you'll hear the pitch differences when it starts to bind up. So let's put this blade back on and let's do some cuts. So when we tighten the blade, once again, we need to press that button down to lock the blade in place. And we don't want to tighten it super tight. We just want to get it on there snug. I kind of like this wrench. It's hard. It's a smaller wrench and it's very hard to over tighten this blade. Let's cut some wood. A few minutes ago, I was talking about the blade guard and how the blade guard can be an interference when you're doing a steep angle cut. And I just want to show that, demonstrate that for you, how to do a steep angle cut. And, you know, some carpenters, like I say, remove this blade guard altogether. I don't. There's a way around it. You have to clamp your workpiece down. I have two clamps on here. Let's go ahead and get a 45. Actually, we'll go a little more than a 45. We'll go like a nice... 65 or something like that and what we want to do let me adjust my workpiece a little bit now to start this cut we're going to need to lift the blade guard out of the way with our thumb it's got this nice handle on it right here when you get it up and fully open you're then able to grab the front handle of the saw. This is exactly what you want to do. Now you can easily start your cut. If you don't lift the blade guard out of the way, it binds. Not only does it bind, but it tries to push the saw away from your line, which will also cause binding because then you're trying to get the saw back on the line and it just creates issues. Once we get clear, once the saw gets into this area right here, we can then release the blade guard and it will not be an interference at that point in time. Let's make this cut.
there we have it a very successful a very safe steep angle cut but you have to have clamps you have to have both of your hands free so the first method of cut we're going to do here to get a square cut is we're going to use a speed square we're going to get us a mark on here let's say we want this board to be 29 inches so we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark it off at 29 right at the center of my point is 29 inches so we're going to go ahead and get that marked out put your pencil right on that point bring your square up to your pencil draw your line out exactly 29 inches now what we want to do is we want to stabilize the saw it's easy enough for some people to make this a straight ish cut but it's never going to be perfect if you don't guide your saw somehow so if you need this cut to be perfect you're going to have to use a guide of some sort and we're going to use the speed square for that now we need to determine how far the speed square needs to be over from our cut line and we can do that a couple of ways we can measure it if we need to be really precise but we have to remember that we want our blade on the outside of this line not on the inside of it on the outside so if I bring my saw up here and I square it up to my speed square and push it in I can adjust it over to where my blade is just at the outside of that line so now using our sole plate right against this square is our straight edge my saw wasn't set deep enough Now what we've produced here is a nice square cut. Taking our combination square, we can set it right up on there. I'll show you closer here in a second exactly what we've got. Get a close up look of it here. And as you can see, we have produced a nice square cut. There's no gaps in there. There's no issues. That is a good square cut. The next way that we can produce a nice square cut, potentially even better than this, is to use a track of the sorts. To use a track, first we have to establish how much material we want to cut off. So we're just going to go ahead and get us a line on there. Then we're going to use our combination square and we're going to figure out exactly how far the blade is away from that side of the sole plate to get the blade to cut on this side of our line. So with my blade guard out of the way, I want to take my combination square and I want to set it to where that it's just touching. And I want to get a carbide over here because that's what I want to set it to is the carbide. And as you can see, I'm right there. I already know my saw is five and one eighth of an inch and I've got it set there. So now let's get that marked over here. So going off of our first cut line, we just want to line, turn it around this way so you can see better. We want to line our combination square up right on that line. So we can still see the line, but we're right on it. Then we want to go ahead and get us a little mark right here take our speed square complete that line and this is something that you would use also if you were cutting a much wider piece of wood than this now what we're going to do is we're going to clamp this piece of wood on that line we want to still be able to see the line but we want it right on the line we also have to keep in mind 
the motor of the saw is going to be sticking over this way. Oh, I forgot to mention, this saw is a side, what they call a side winder. The blade is bolted directly to the motor. There is another circular saw that is a worm drive. And the worm drive saws, the blade is not bolted directly to the motor. Those saws tend to be slightly more compact. However, they pack a bigger punch. They have a lot more power. And unfortunately, I don't really like them. I bought one a long time ago, decided I didn't have much use for it, and I sold it and never looked back. Now that we're straight on this, what we can do is we can come in here off the side with our combination square and make sure that we're square off the edge of the board. And we are. So we are ready to cut this. So this will be similar to what we did with the speed spur, only we don't need to hold this in place. And there we have it. That is going to be an exact 90 degree cut. So earlier in the video, I was telling you that I am using a framing blade. That framing blade has been on my saw for, for quite some time. It has cut a lot of wood. So let's take a look at the quality of cut. As you can see, there is no tear out on the top side. There's no tear out on the bottom side. The only tear out we have is just a little bit of fuzzing right here. And you are going to get that with just about any saw blade that you use. Now it's still important that you pick the right saw blade for the job. But a good sharp saw blade goes a long way. Let's get a bevel cut on here at 45 degrees. Whenever I'm using this circular saw, and I have used it for bevel cuts, I made a video on how to build a waterfall bench and in that video I used the bevel feature on my circular saw to cut the 45's on that waterfall bench. They turned out really nice. Unfortunately I did have to take two of the pieces and run them through the table saw just to clean them up a little bit. But I was really happy with what I got with the circular saw for the rest of that project. So for a bubble cut, I would do the exact same thing. And we're just going to back off of this line a little bit rather than make another one. We're going to clamp this in place. Remembering to hold the clamps back a little bit so that the saw motor doesn't hit them. We're going to get this one in place. We're going to check it for square. Not very good. Now we have a nice square surface. We are going to set our saw to 45 degrees. And also, like I was saying earlier, the wider part of this sold plate is going on the board that we're keeping. Now, while we're at our 45 degree, our saw is set at three quarters of an inch, but it is not going to cut all the way through this material because now we're cutting a longer cut. An angle cut is always a longer cut than a zero cut or a 90 degree cut. So we need to drop down the sole plate a little bit 
to make sure that we get through this. Now it's the same thing. Sole plate, tie it against the edge of this board. We now have a 45 degree cut. For any of the other settings on the saw, I would recommend using your eyeball to line it up on the line to figure out where this board needs to go. So in other words, I would get my saw up here, maybe use my speed square to get it squared up visually see where my line is at then make a mark with my pencil right here and then go ahead and finish that clamp my board on and then make my cut that way especially if precision is important as far as length is concerned So what we have now is a nice 90 degree cut from the side of the board. As you can see that turned out very nice. We also have a very nice 45 degree cut. We're sitting nice and flat on both sides. So the 45 degree setting is very accurate on this saw and bevel cuts are something that you can do they're just not going to be as precision as a miter saw now i've talked about blade depth and being safe by adjusting only allowing enough of the blade to stick out for whatever depth of cut you need one way to stay safe the second way to stay safe is to leave this guard in place the third way to stay safe is never ever put your hand underneath. If you're cutting something that you don't want to fall on the floor, then your workpiece needs to be supported. Per se, you cut it right here on top of this wood. You know that your blade is only protruding through a little bit. You're gonna cut a little line in this wood. Your cutoff will not fall to the ground if that is a piece that you want to use later and you don't want the corner getting bunked up or whatever the case may be never put your hand underneath you'll see carpenters and i've done it a million times because there's nowhere sometimes on a job site to clamp things down there might be some saw horses to set them on but especially when you get into a smaller piece like this i'm going to hold it kind of like this and i'm going to cut it like this my hand is way clear of the blade and it's only through using this saw for many years that i would even attempt to do something like that it does happen and it's typically with a two by four now speaking of two by fours i want to show you one more thing because some people call it a terrible habit but 90% of the time, I do not use these markings on the sole plate. I use the blade. And here's the reason why. Let me set the blade at a depth to cut through this 2x4. Let me get a line on this. So if I wanted to cut this 2x4 off at this line, now as a carpenter, this is what I cut a whole bunch of. Here's the problem. I set my saw up here. Guess what? <laughs> the line is already used up. You have nothing to follow. There's no guide to follow. So I watch inside of here, this area right here, where I can see what the blade is doing on that line. The problem with that is on a bigger piece of wood you can't see what's coming. 
So it's easy to make a crooked cut. It's in rough framing. It's not that critical if this cut isn't super straight because it's rough framing. It needs to be a good cut, but it doesn't need to be 100% dead on accurate. So anytime that you're cutting a two by four or a smaller piece of wood, you're not going to be able to use this. You're going to have to use your line of sight right through here. Let's cut this off. With no guides, no anything, we have pretty much a dead on 90 degree cut. We're about a 32nd of an inch short right here. In rough framing, totally acceptable. Woodworking, not so much. And remember, whenever you're changing a blade or you're changing an adjustment or you have your hands anywhere in here, especially if you're holding the saw like this, make it a habit to hold it like this, plugged or unplugged. Do not put your finger on the trigger until you are ready to go. It, well, if you make this your habit and how you carry the saw, how you use the saw, how you make adjustments to the saw, even if you forget to unplug it, you're never gonna have an accident. Secondly, change the blade. Make sure this is always unplugged when you're changing the blade. You're kind of tumbling the saw around. It would be easy to accidentally give the trigger a squeeze and that would be disaster. So remember to be safe with your power. Next is your PPE. Remember to use eye protection. If you so desire, a mask, earplugs, some of this stuff is a bad habit on my part. Working construction site, people calling down measurements to you or you calling measurements to them. They're cutting, the saw stops, you yell down another measurement, they cut it. There is not a lot of hearing protection on the job sites because we need to be able to hear. So that some of that is things that I should beat out of myself. Fortunately for me, my hearing is still really good. I don't have tinnitus, so I'm, I'm lucky in that aspect because I've been around a lot of these tools for a long time without using much in the way of hearing protection. All right, guys, that's all we got for this time. Remember, I've put a link down below if you're interested in any of these tools, and I hope this video has enlightened you, encouraged you, and given you the confidence if you don't already own a circular saw to go out and get yourself one and do the projects that you want to do. If you do already own one and you're or struggling with getting straight cuts or struggling with any of the cuts, I hope that what I've shown you it will help you out in the future. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. If you enjoyed yourself, click on the playlist or the video that's going to pop up next to me. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.